So let's, uh, I'm going to sort of dive in. Split with you here. Um, who has a question here in Chicago? Um, I wouldn't. Uh, so the question was, uh, if you have an atypical shape on a building uh, in the uh, uh, grading vignette, uh, would you actually like bring the contours, like the you know swales or things, into the the interior crevices? Um, the answer is um, it, it depends. Um, typically, it's uh, it's not really going to matter. Like what you're looking at generally is sort of big picture, right? If you think of the rain hitting the upper part of the site and flowing across the site, you're just trying to move it around the issues. So it's possible that you would want to have it touch into those kind of crevices, um, but probably not, right? You're trying to keep it as simple as you can, but still answer all the issues. You're gonna find no matter what you do, there's gonna be a little spot that's still gonna drain, like you know, a three foot area that's gonna drain onto your site. That's okay. That's not what they're talking about. What they're talking about is like a giant rainfall coming down on the site and the site next to you and all draining into your into your building or onto your uh, foundation of a sculpture or whatever it is. So you're looking for big picture on it. So you don't need to get too minute, but you may need to answer it by getting into the crevice that if that's the question that you have to answer, but probably not. So Emily asks, um, is percent slope always vertical or horizontal or can it be the other way? Horizontal, vertical? Yeah, so if you're talking about uh, percent slopes, um, the way to think of it is, if, it's, if, it's, if it says a 20% slope, think of that as 20 vertical compared to 100 horizontal. Um, so it's the percent, the, the 100 is always the horizontal, and that's the sort of baseline. And then you have to translate that into something useful for yourself. So 20% uh, slope is uh, 20 to 100 is the same as 1 to 5. Therefore, a one, vertic one foot vertical contour, uh, if it's five feet apart to the next one uh, on the plan, then that means that's a 20% slope, right? So you can see it very quickly and easily, but it's always that the 100 baseline is always the horizontal. Uh, ben asks, uh, aside from Black Spectacles, what are the other, um, uh, your recommended resources? I will make a note here that we have a little link here to Mike's recommended a number of resources uh, outside of just our online prep, so books that you uh, should should take a look at. So use that link. That's one of them. Yeah. Any other? And and we'll actually be adding some more. I've been thinking about it a little bit. I'm going to be adding some more to that uh, to that list. Um, for this particular one, the one that I love, I think is just a, a brilliant, easy book um, with very simple drawings on it. It's called uh, Sun, Wind, and yeah. What is it? Some sun, wind, and something. something this one here. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, oh, damn. Oh, no, this one. Sun, wind, and light. Sun, wind, and light. Um, it's, a, it's really a great book. There's a number of different versions of it. Not, uh, any of the versions are fine. Um, it has very, very simple uh, graphics that are like super explanatory. Um, I steal them all the time when I'm doing lectures. Uh, and it talks about orientation. It talks about wind patterns, it talks about uh, shapes of buildings and how the shape of the building impacts the flow of the wind. Uh, so if you're talk trying to talk about like where should the patio go, you can start thinking about the shape of the roof and it'll affect uh, the location where you might put things. It's very simple and straightforward and yet incredibly detailed. Um, beyond that, there's actually a number of, uh, of very good books, but sort of uh, they tend to be more it's kind of not big picture, more specific. Um, uh, there's a couple of really great ones, like Ian McCard's uh, uh, Design with Nature, I think it's called. Um, I actually met Ian McCard when I was an undergrad back way, way, way years ago. Uh, he was an amazing, amazing guy. Um, I can't really imagine you're going to read that book for uh, this exam. It's more of just a really interesting book about designing with nature. The sun, wind, uh, and light is super helpful. Uh, so I think that's a great one. And there's lots of other uh, examples. We find the Ching has a lot of 
uh, very good stuff about site uh, plans. Um, there's a, a bunch of different sources. We'll probably put some more uh, resources up on our, our link list as well. Cool. Anybody have any other questions here in Chicago? Looks like that might be it online. I don't think I see anything else on Twitter. That it? All right, good. So in conclusion, I'd like to thank Margaret again uh, and Perkins and Will for hosting and Laura uh, and Mr. Newman here. Um, yeah, if, Mr. Newman. Mr. That's Newman, what I like yes. Blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or if you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. So that's going to be on April 22nd.